Thomas Jefferson never imagined the United States would be a coast-to-coast -coast country. In fact, he believed that a new nation would rise up on the Pacific coast to become a great partner of the United States. Today, obviously the West Coast is part of the United States and Canada respectively. But what if the Pacific Northwest, also known as Cascadia, was its own country? Welcome to What If Geography, where we try and answer the great what if geographic questions of the world. Today we're going to talk about Cascadia, the imagined country that comprises the Pacific Northwest of the United States and the Pacific Southwest of Canada. But before we dive into what Cascadia might look like today, let's first talk a bit about the history of Cascadia as an idea. As with all things in North America, prior to any sort of European colonization, the Pacific Northwest was a land inhabited by Native American and First Nation tribes. Before 1800, it's estimated that the general area of the Pacific Northwest had over 500,000 people living within it, most of whom were indigenous peoples. It's important to recognize that this area is the native homes of the Chinook, Yakima, Nisqually, and many, many more tribes. But the idea of an independent Western nation on the Pacific coast is not a new one. In fact, Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States, described the establishment of Port Astoria as, quote, the germ of a great free and independent empire on that side of our continent and that liberty and self-government spreading from that side as well as from this side will ensure their complete establishment over the whole. Fort Astoria, of course, was originally established as an extension of John Jacob Astor's fur trading empire in an effort to capitalize on the unspoiled West Coast. The idea was that this business enterprise would attract people who would establish a larger colony and eventually a country of their own. At this point in history, the United States was so far away that it was unrealistic to assume that any new formalized country would be any sort of extension of the United States. Fort Astoria didn't work out as intended for either John Jacob Astor or Thomas Jefferson. The business enterprise was wrought with failures and disasters and, just three years after its founding, it was sold to a British-Canadian fur trading company. And just like that, the dream of an independent country on the West Coast was gone. But what if Fort Astoria had succeeded? And what if a new independent country did materialize in this small corner of the continent? Okay, this is the part where we're going to get highly speculative. To realize this from our end, you're going to need to suspend your belief just a little bit as we dive into existing data to make up our hypothetical Cascadia. Cascadia doesn't actually have any predetermined borders because the country never materialized on its own. That said, there are a number of different ideas of what Cascadia would look like if it did exist. This interpretation of Cascadia comprises the bioregion which encompasses all of Washington state, most of Oregon, Idaho, and British Columbia, and then smaller portions of Montana, Alaska, Yukon, and California. It is, by far, the largest in terms of area size. On the opposite end is a Cascadia that encompasses only the areas west of the Cascade Mountain Range from about Vancouver, British Columbia to Eugene, Oregon. This Cascadia is largely based on political ideologies, the goal being to separate the politically left-leaning areas from the very conservative rural areas in the east. And then there's this Cascadia, which is probably the most popular Cascadia map you'll find on the internet. This Cascadia is comprised of the entire states of Oregon and Washington, and the Canadian province of British Columbia. And to be honest, if Cascadia did secede and become its own country today, it would probably use these existing boundaries as they're already established administratively and bureaucratically. These are the boundaries that we'll be using to realize our Cascadia today. Now, Cascadia would not be a small country. The combined area size of Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia would be about 534,000 square miles, or 1,378,000 square kilometers. This would make it the 19th largest country in the world, just below Mongolia and right above Peru. In North America, it would be the fourth largest country behind Canada, the United States, and Mexico. And yes, this is accounting for the amount of land that Cascadia would take away from Canada and the United States under this scenario. Despite being a large country in terms of total area size, Cascadia would actually be a fairly small country in terms of population. The entire country would only be about 17 million people. This would place it as the 69th most populous country globally, which would be fewer people than the Netherlands despite having over 10 times the area size. To further illustrate this, Cascadia would have approximately 32 people per square mile, whereas the Netherlands has approximately 423 people per square mile. All that's to say, Cascadia would have a lot of room to grow. Speaking of population, Cascadia would be home to a wide variety of cultures and ethnicities. While the country would be primarily ethnically white and English speaking at about 68%, it would also be considerably of Asian heritage with about 14% of the population. About 4% would be from the indigenous peoples of the region, and a further 3% would be black. Culturally, Hispanic and Latinos would make up about 14% of the combined population. Though this is a bit harder to track because Canada doesn't track cultural Hispanic and Latinos in a similar manner as the United States. Most of that population would be situated within three major metropolitan areas of Cascadia. 
the Seattle metro area with about 4 million people, the Portland metro area with about 2.7 million people, and the Vancouver metro area with about 2.6 million people. All combined, these three metro areas would contain about half of Cascadia's total population. Other large cities in Cascadia include Spokane and Washington, Eugene in Oregon, and Victoria in British Columbia. Speaking of Victoria, Cascadia would need its own national capital as well. Victoria is the capital of British Columbia, Olympia is the capital of Washington, and Salem is the capital of Oregon. Any of these three cities would make for a realistic national capital to Cascadia given that the infrastructure is already in place for such administrative and political needs. Of the three, Olympia would likely make the most sense given its geographically central location between the three major metropolitan areas. That said, Olympia's closeness to Seattle might work against it as a national capital. Therefore, a city such as Spokane might make the most sense to ensure one metro doesn't have extra influence. Economically, Cascadia would be an absolute powerhouse nation relative to its size. With a national GDP of $1.15 trillion, Cascadia would rank as the 15th wealthiest country in the world, just below Spain and just above Mexico. When population is factored in, Cascadia would perform even better and would rank 12th with about $61,000 per capita. This places it just about even with Denmark. Of course, none of this should be a surprise, as Cascadia is home to some of the largest and most profitable companies to ever exist. Cascadia would serve as the home of Microsoft, Starbucks, Boeing, Amazon, Nike, Columbia Sportswear, Zillow, Lululemon, Lionsgate Entertainment, and many, many more billion dollar companies. In terms of agriculture, Cascadia would also serve as a bit of a breadbasket for other countries. Thanks to the Missoula floods a few hundred thousand years ago, Large parts of Washington and Oregon are prime agricultural lands providing arable land for crops such as wheat, hazelnuts, cherries, and apples. Both Washington and Oregon also have a robust wine industry. And of course, Cascadia would likely continue to serve as one of the largest timber producing regions of the world. To protect all of this, Cascadia would need its own military. But as we see with Canada, this would likely be a fairly small force given its proximity to the military powerhouse that is the United States. Cascadia does already kind of have a military force of about 15,000 troops in the Oregon and Washington State National Guards. That's fairly small for a national military, of course, but Canada's military size is only about 70,000 active soldiers in total. Given the relative size of Cascadia, it's safe to assume that any national military of Cascadia would be somewhere around the same size as Canada's, both of which would be much smaller than the United States' current active military size of about 1.4 million soldiers. Cascadia is an idea that has existed well before the United States and Canada expanded their dominance over the area. But while Cascadia will likely never formally exist as its own country, there are plenty of groups that promote the idea of Cascadia as a regional identity. And of course, Cascadia even has its own flag, endearingly nicknamed the Doug. Regardless of its lack of a future as an independent country, Cascadia has cemented itself within the cultural milieu of the Pacific Northwest. If Cascadia were to materialize today, with no interruption to population or economy, it would be a modern developed country. It would be equivalent in economic and political weight as many of the countries that exist in Europe today. I hope you enjoyed exploring Cascadia as its own country. If you did, please like this video. If you want to watch more of my videos, you can do so here. And of course, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. You can do that right here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.